Sorry, that's my humor for the day. Okay. <laughs> Scripture reading today is Romans 12, 4 through 21. For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. So we begin many, are one body. So we, being many, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry, let us use it to our ministering. He who teaches in teaching. He who exhorts in exhortation. He who gives with liability. He who leads with diligence. He who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without hypocrisy. Ahur what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love. In honor, giving preference to one another. Not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints given to hospitality. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Repay no one evil for evil, have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peacefully with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourself, but rather give place to wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, said the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Do not over, overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Today I can talk, and um, I'm here to give you a good message, which I hope if any one of you gets a blessing out of it, that makes me very, very happy. When I told Alan I would preach, so many things go through my head that I want to say to everybody, and I have to channel my thoughts and get my mind under, under control because I just want to go crazy and just tell you everything I can think about and hope that it sinks in and, and all that stuff. And it, first of all, I'd like to thank Jacob for taking my place a couple weeks ago. I appreciate that. And um, I also want to give thanks to Jacob and his music, and I'd like to give thanks to our girls and their music. Um, it doesn't hurt to tell them once in a while that they're doing a good job. They may not always hit the notes right, but they're singing for the Lord, and that's all that matters. That's all that matters. I know, been up here, been there, done that, so I know how that works. Sometimes it seems like a thankless task. But anyway, we're going to do something a little, little silly today before we get started. Verla, Debbie? You've heard... Alan speak of um, 
uh, the, um, I don't know, I can't think of the words, darn it, I should have written it down. Um, youth. Um, what, yeah, Juana. Juana is, is helpful to that because we see the youth and how they grow in Juana's, and it's wonderful. But faith in youth, the youth is open and just so open, and they're so ready to learn and just really absorb all of it. So, anyway, we're going to sing one of the kids' songs. It's called This Little Light of Mine, and I'd like you to stand up. And Debbie will help with the motions, and I want to see everybody do the motions as best they can. You're lucky because I was going to do a much more physical song, but I thought, meh, maybe not. So anyway, here we go. This little light of mine. have to get up and sit down and get up and sit down and get up and sit down. And I, I thought a little better of that, so anyway. Here we go. I'm sorry I have to have I have this cough drop in my mouth, but my voice is just still kind of silly. And I just pray to God that it stays okay for, through this. Anyway, I chose the, the topic of with God all things are possible because that's what really I feel in my life. Um, I haven't had the best life in the world, and you know, that's neither here nor there. It's what you make of it in the end is what really counts. And with me, that is really, really important. And I think of that phrase very, very often. So I thought I'd use it. And the other one I think of is Joshua 1.9. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And if you keep those two things in your minds, and you just think of those things anytime you're having any stress, any troubles, just think of those and, and you know, let go and let God. And I, I think it, it can help a lot. It has helped me an awful lot. I had hip surgery just seven, seven weeks ago. That's why the cane. And I'm not liking having that cane following me around, but it's what I got to do for a little while. But um, it's good. The other verse I started, I backtracked. Sorry about that. Joshua 1.9. 1, I already said that? Yeah, I did. Okay. I'm all right. So anyway, I chose the book of James. Actually, it was from the original week that I was supposed to speak. But when I read the book of James, it just got to me, and it just, t just talked to me about all the things that are um, being a Christian means to you. And it means to me, and I hope it means to each one of you. The author of James was one of Jesus' brothers, probably the eldest. At first, he did not believe in Jesus and even challenged him and misunderstood his mission. After Jesus' resurrection, James became very prominent in the Jerusalem church. His audience was Jewish Christians, perhaps Jerusalem, Jerusalem believers scattered after Stephen's death. James 1.1 describes it as the 12 tribes scattered among the nations. A Jewish audience would be in keeping with the Jewish nature of the letter. His theme emphasizes vital Christianity by good deeds and faith that works. In chapter 1, James believe, teaches believers to test their faith and prove yourself as doers of the world. James 1.22 says, but don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. James encouraged believers to put their faith into action 
and be servants of Jesus Christ. In chapters 2 and 3 of James, he talks about the relationship between faith and works. He teaches that, person of faith, that a person of faith without works demonstrates useless faith. What good is a person's faith if they don't present it to the world? What good is a person's faith? If, I said that already, sorry. A believer's good, work, good works are evidence of their faith, faith in Jesus Christ. He also teaches that everyone is a sinner and that one of the Ten Commandments are broken, that that person is guilty of breaking every one of them. And here's the little one thing again, kind of jumping in there. James 2.10 says, whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles in one point is guilty of all. In chapters 4 and 5, James gives wise instruction to believers. He said in 4.7, Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. A faithful believer will desire to follow hard after God in service, obedience, and prayer. In the last chapter, James, James stresses the weight and magnitude of prayer for every believer. He uses the word prayer seven times, signifying its importance. In the final verse of this book, James expresses the magnitude of living faith in action. In James 5, 19 and 20, he says, My brethren, if any, of you, if any among you strays from the truth and one turns him back, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. Now let's go back and examine the different headings. The first one we're going to start with in James is trials and tribulations. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lack wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave in the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable, unstable in all that they do. Blessed is the one who preserve, perse perseveres under trial, because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. The second one is listening and doing. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word, and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves, and their religion is worthless. And we'll deal with the tongue thing here in, in a little bit, a little more than that. <laughs> the next one is favor, favoritism is forbidden. Believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ must not show favoritism. Suppose the person comes to you wearing a gold ring and fancy clothes, and a poor person in filthy old clothes also comes in. If you show special attention to the person wearing fine clothes and say, here is a good seat for you, but say to the poor man, you stand over there or sit on the floor by my feet. You have not discriminated among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts. Has God not chosen those who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith and to inherit the kingdom he promised to those who love him? If you really keep the royal law found in scripture, love your neighbor as yourself, you are doing right. But you show, if you show favoritism, you sin and are convicted by the law as lawbreakers. For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking it all. There's that little one thing again. Speak and act as those who are going to be judged by the law that gives freedom. Because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Faith and deeds. What good is it if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds?
Can faith save them? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of them says to you, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself is not accompanied, faith by itself, if not accompanied by action, is dead. If someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds, show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith with my deeds. You believe that there is one God. Good. Even the, belie the demons believe that, and they shudder. You foolish person, you do want evidence that faith without deeds. Do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together, and his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was credited to credited to him as righteousness, and he was called God's friend. You see that a person is considered righteous by what they do and not by faith alone. In the same way, was not even uh, Rahab, the prostitute, considered rat righteous for what she did when she gave lod lodgings to the spies and then set them off in a different direction so they didn't get caught. As a body without spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. Okay, here we go, taming the tongue. Well, that's a biggie, as far as I'm concerned. We all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect, able to keep their body in check. But when we put bits in the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and driven by the strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants it to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body. It makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, set the whole course of one's life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. This should not be. Can fresh water and salt water flow, flow from the same spring? Can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Well, neither then can a salt spring produce fresh water. And the thing with the tongues is that I know and I, I hear things and see things and get sad about a lot of things that the tongue causes when people speak out of turn or don't think before they speak. It causes great hurt and that hurt is a hard to go away. The person that is the recipient has the trouble with getting rid of something that's very hurtful when they're told that they don't like something they're doing. And that's not fair because everybody does everything different and we need to keep our, our um, tongue to ourselves, basically. The next one is two kinds of wisdom. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you har harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. For where you have in envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. That kind of goes along with the tongue. But the wise that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. In Proverbs 18.4 says that the words of the mouth are deep waters, but the fountain of wisdom is a rushing stream. And in Jeremiah 10.12 it says, but God made the earth by his power. He founded the world by his wisdom and he stretched out the heavens by his understanding. Submit yourselves to God. 
What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You desire, but do not have, so you kill. You covet, but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask God, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures, on your own pleasures. Submit yourself then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. How am I doing on time, Mike? <laughs> we kind of have a contest who can do almost equal to Alan. That hasn't happened yet. <laughs> do not slander one another. Anyone who speaks against a brother or sister or judges them speaks against the law and judges it. When you judge the law, you are not keeping it, but sitting in judgment on it. There is only one lawgiver and judge and the one who is able to save and destroy. But who, you are, to who are you to judge the, your neighbor? Job 22:21 says, Submit to God and be at peace with him. In this way, prosperity will come to you. Patience and suffering. Patience, be patient until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting for autumn and spring rains. You too, be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. Don't grumble against one another or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. As an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets, take, Take the prophets in the face of suffering. Take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we count as blessed those who have perse persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord brought about for him finally. And that was a terrible thing. He lost his children, he lost everything, and then he came down with a terrible disease. And through the whole thing, he still believed in the Lord. He never lost his faith. He never. He knew that someday everything would be right, and eventually it was all right. He got back everything but plus more. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Above all, do not swear, not by heaven or by earth or by anything else. All you need to say is a simple yes or no, otherwise you will be condemned. Colossians 3.12 says, Therefore, as God's chosen people, Holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, and gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And, all these and over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Second Peter 3.15 Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation just as our dear brother Paul also wrote you with the wisdom that God gave him. He writes the same way in all his letters, speaking in, the, of the, uh, in them of these matters. His letters contain some things that are hard to understand, which, which ignorant and unstable people distort, as they do other scriptures, to their own destruction. Therefore, dear friends, since you have been forewarned, be on your guard so that you may not be carried away by the error of the lawless and fall from your secure position. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be both glory now and forever. And the last one is the prayer of faith. If anyone among you, is anyone among you in trouble? Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will rise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that, so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being, even as we are. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain. It did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again, he prayed and the heaven gave rain and the earth produced its crops. 
If one of you wander from the truth and someone should bring that person back, remember this, whoever turns a sinner from error of their ways will save them from death and cover over a multitude of sins. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for the words and thank you for giving me my voice to make it through my message this morning. Be with everyone as they go on, the, on their way and have them think of these things that we talked about today. They're all very, very important and then some of them can be very hurtful and some of them can be very pleasurable. So stick with the pleasurable and don't try, to, try not to hurt anyone. We just love you, Lord, and praise you in Jesus' precious name. Amen.